The operating room setup fits conveniently on a Mayo stand and follows the procedure sequentially from left to right. First, palpate the paracoxygeal notch and make a two centimeter incision lateral to the coccyx. After a thorough finger dissection of the presacral space has been completed, insert the curved dissector to sacral promontory with lateral dissection to the sacral foramina. Remove the curved dissector and insert the bowel retractor to the sacral promontory. Inflate with mixture of saline and contrast. Next, insert the dissecting tool over the bowel retractor and advance it along the midline of the anterior sacral surface with fluoroscopic monitoring. At approximately the S1 S2 junction, engage the beveled guide pin and tap it into L5. Once the guide wire is engaged, use a series of sequential dilators to create a working channel. A dilator sheath is attached to the 10 millimeter dilator. The dilator sheath is left in the sacrum to create a transosseous working channel. Drill into L5 S1 disc space with the 9 millimeter cannulated drill. Prepare the disc space with a series of nitinol disc cutters and and plate rasps, varying in length and cutting actions. Each of the four cutters and rasps are designed to debulk the nucleus pulposus and abrade the vertebral end plates circumferentially up to the 3 cm footprint while creating a bleeding bed for fusion. Use the tissue extractors between the four cutters and rasps to extract the diseased disc. Use the bone graft inserter to fill the disc space with a mixture of autologous blood and demineralized bone material. Remove the 10 mm sheath with the 8 mm dilator. Insert the 12 mm dilator and sheath into the working channel. Remove the 12 mm dilator and leave the 12 mm sheath in place. Drill just into the L5 S1 disc space with the 10.5 mm drill. Using the 12 mm dilator tamp, advance the 12 mm sheath until it is flush with the inferior end plate of L5, effectively pushing bone graft material radially. Advance the 10.5 mm drill one third to halfway into the L5 vertebral body to allow for the L5 dilator trial insertion. Insert the selected L5 dilator trial into the L5 vertebral body until the shoulder is in line with the inferior L5 end plate. From this placement, the L5 and S1 anchor sizing is determined. Remove the 12 mm sheath with the 10 mm dilator. Insert sequentially the exchange bushing and conformable tip tubular retractor over the guide wire. While holding the conformable tip tubular retractor on the face of the sacrum, insert two fixation wires to hold the retractor in place. Assemble the selected L5 anchor, distraction rod, and S1 anchor onto the dual driver and insert into the prepared channel simultaneously. Use the counter torque tube and distraction driver to advance the internal distraction rod. They are designed to distract the L5 S1 vertebral bodies, restore disc height, and indirectly decompress the neural foramen. The L5 and S1 anchors remain stationary in the vertebral bodies during the L5 S1 distraction. Insert the fixation rod to lock the L5 anchor, distraction rod, and S1 anchor into a solid construct. The Axialift Plus procedure is complete via surgeon's preference of posterior instrumentation.